So there are three types of Voronoi gradients, and you can see here, they're under here as generate, sample, and fill. So generate just ultimately just creates a, a general color that you can choose from any one of these. So for instance, if I want to change this color to a slightly different red and so forth, I can kind of change it there. I can also add points. This is based on a Voronoi uh, fracture pattern. So if I take my smoothness, bring it down to zero, you can see the pattern. If I go ahead and add a point, right now there's four points. If I add a point, it always will show up at the bottom left-hand corner of the frame. You can move it and you can see the interpolation of that. Now, uh, what Nikolai has created is an uh, or he's using an algorithm that actually does natural neighboring interpolation. So this is a really nice smooth operation. You do have the option of Voronoi diagram with anti-aliasing if you want, but uh, this is a nice algorithm. It can be computationally expensive. You can change the speed optimizations of this. And you can see that you can also do overscan. So if you kind of pull this out, there's more information up here. So for instance, if I were to say, you know, transform this over, right? Go ahead and bring it over here. You can see the information is still there. And again, you can keep taking this sort of overscan and crank it up. Just see it kind of expounds upon uh, what you have. So that's the generate that's the type generate and now we're gonna move over to where we really get to work and that's the sampling so here I have an image of the sky and if you change this from uh, generate to sample it automatically takes the input resolution of what's coming down otherwise if it's set to generate you have to actually define the actual resolution so I can go ahead and put this in here and just by moving these points it's now sampling the localized uh, area so you can see if I go back and forth between these two it's interpolating between these areas of the clouds and so forth and you can see with a difference mat that you know we get a pretty good result and if I go ahead and make another point it'll interpolate you know another area so if I see an area that's kind of like just what it is I'll go ahead and point it there and now you'll start to see this area starting to get a nice you know similarity between the original and you keep adding more and more points like I said if you're trying to create maybe a mat and so forth uh, but you can see right here, it's almost like as if, uh, in a way, it's like the IBK gizmo color, you know. Um, you know, it's kind of like just removing the uh, specific uh, clouds. Again, it's not as accurate as that. But you kind of get the idea that just by you yourself trying to create gradients on your yourself with linear gradients, it's going to be a lot of work. But in this case, you can kind of get in here and do this really cool uh, sort of like process of, rebuilding the sky if you're trying to remove clouds or something. So another example here is, uh, like for instance, you know, how could you use this in production? Well, you can see up here we have a little bit of vignette in this shot and a very sort of like misty background. So what I did was I put uh, a Voronoi points up here and then I added a little bit of oversample, oh, uh, I'm sorry, overscan. And with that, you can see the overscan has stretched out this far. And then I went ahead and key mixed in the sky because sometimes you have to move a shot down and maybe the matte painting uh, or whatever you know matte image it doesn't have that information so by adding that in there's extra sky up here interpolated now as I transform it down I have that and then of course I could always reformat and do a mirror border and that just mirrors the border and I could just transform it over obviously there's probably some paint work and this is a little bit too mirrored but you can kind of see how you can use this to recreate or extend out your uh, skies and so forth. So the last uh, kind of uh, workflow is fill, which is pretty cool. And this this actually doesn't use any points, even though you might have points um, in your gradient. In this point, I just have one point. It doesn't matter if you have points in there or not because it's based on a pre-multiplied image. The image has to be pre-multiplied. So here you can see this jogger, and at this point, the at this point, the points don't really matter. And I went ahead and just created a pretty weird looking alpha. This area right here, if you sample it, the value is a 0.064 on the actual um, uh, alpha information. And then it has to be pre-malted, that's a requirement. And now I add a Voronoi fracture, uh, sorry, Voronoi gradient. And you can see here what it's doing is it's interpolating the data down. It's kind of like a pixel fudger filler in a way. And the alpha threshold means whatever, if, if you want to use that value to sample, it has to be above this number. So again, if we go back to the alpha information, we can see this value is 0.06. So if I come over here and I take the alpha threshold and get down to that point, you'll start to see that, that guy's head start to interpolate into the, the result. You also have overscan and you have your typical you know, output of smoothness and so forth.
but again, the points don't matter. And it doesn't really work well with really, really um, heavy frequency texture like these clouds up here, but if you have a misty background like this, you can go ahead and use a, a luminance key, and then I went ahead and did a erode fine, and then I did a binary alpha, which basically either makes something pure white or pure black. And then I just blurred the alpha, pre-multiplied it, and then I used the Voronoi gradient. As you can see here, again, I don't need to put any points. It's sampling the edge, as you can see. And you can, again, just adjust your alpha threshold, and you'll start to see, like there, it's starting to get a little bit of building, but if you kind of pull it up, you should be good to go. So this is good for, like, again, sort of removing things or, you know, extending out or creating skies and so forth.